Hello, welcome back to the channel, hope you're enjoying it, and as always, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Now, in the last episode of Organ Chats, we visited a Wurzer in the house, and I thought, well, surely there can't be that many uh, organs in private houses. Um, but I found another. Um, but this isn't a Wurzer. It's not a Compton. It's not a Christie. It's not a Rutt. This is a Standart. And, well, here it is. <laughs> Right, well, I'm here with uh, Damon, sat at the console. So tell me a bit, well, well, you know, how did this come to get, you know, be in your house? How did you, how did it come about? Right, I'll try and keep the story down to under 10 hours. Um, but I was contacted by a good friend of mine, Nigel Laughlin, who was emailed by a chap called Brian Hart. And he said that uh, his mum had passed away, Yvonne, and that he was looking to rehome uh, a cinema organ in a house, not really knowing that it was a standard. Um, so I did a bit of research, discovered it was a standart, and read up, up about Ricky Hart and thought to myself, oh, I'll go and have a look at that, it'd be a bit interesting, more out of curiosity's sake, but something in the back of my mind was thinking, hmm, project. Yeah. So me and Nigel, we went down, we surveyed the organ, spent uh, hours crawling around dusty and cramped spaces up in the loft there. And, uh, it was all jam-packed in his loft, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes. It was a home installation like none other. You know, other people convert garages and spare bedrooms, but no. He had the pipework in the loft of a terraced house, I hasten to add, in Folkestone, with the console downstairs, and all the sound was relayed with microphones in the chamber, um, down to the console in the living room. He had like, a big bank of speakers underneath and above the window. Um, so it was a completely balmy installation, but... He was doing it in the 60s with almost no money. He had a goal to do something, and he did achieve something along the lines of having a cinema organ at home. Yeah. So you went to view this thing, and then something made you decide, I, I want this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought if I'm going to learn, let's learn the hard way. Yeah. You know, there's so many instruments out there that you could just pick up and find them almost restored already or with very little work, and I thought... I could do no worse than this yeah. was sort of my ambition. Yeah. So you wanted a challenge. <laughs> yes, and I got a challenge. Yeah. Uh, taking it out was, I think, one of the biggest challenges because having to unpick his thinking, yeah. you know, and working out how, does, how did this go together because there was stuff that you couldn't take that off without taking that off and then this was in the way and we think, how did he do this? Yeah. So did you, did you set out, when you decided you were going to buy it, mm. and, and did you decide then you were going to put it in your house or were you going to look for somewhere else or...? There was an interesting time, there was a possibility of having this house at the time that I got the organ, but nothing was set in stone, and I thought, well, better to sort of find a home for it than, you know, not have a cinema organ to start yeah. with. But it just so happened that, the, um, you know, all of the logistics involved in getting this place came through at the right time, because I'd always had my eye on, I thought, it was perfect, the garage is through there, I could put the pipework in there, speak nicely into the living room. And I spent a long time looking through estate agents adverts thinking we were going to move off to some deepest, darkest Norfolk somewhere. Um, but no, this, this place is perfect for yeah, it really, yeah. in terms of its layout anyway. Yeah. So how many ranks is this now? Well there's eight real ranks and one digital rank. Right. Right. So, so it still retains its hybrid um, you know, sounds to it, so the bass, some of the percussions and the brass saxophone are all digital yeah. and the rest of it is all real. Yeah. So, so again, with, with the console as well, because this isn't the console that was uh, that was at Ricky Hart's, was it? So, no. how did you come? How did you come by the? Because I mean, I think for the benefit of the viewers, they only imported six into this country, yes. didn't they? So, you know. this is technically the seventh, is what right. I like to think. Um, the original console that Ricky built was sort of a period of its time and necessity more than anything. I think it was sort of going for a Compton Electrone style, but uh, it was not built with the best materials. And by the time we got hold of it, it was basically falling to pieces. Yeah. My plan was to go over to Holland and to measure up an original console and build a replica. Um, and I got in touch with the NOF and got very friendly with them and chatty back and forth. And they're a great organisation, answering lots of questions about why did Standart do this, uh, etc. And they emailed me one day out of the blue. So we got this console. We're going to reuse the pipework. It was for a four rank job, which wasn't the best in the world. And they said, you can have the console for free, but you've got to come and get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so off we went on the ferry. <laughs> And uh, James drove me all the way, spent uh, two days back and forth going, and uh, they took us round, saw all of the organs. So this was, they're not actually quite sure where it was before the war, but they think it was in the cinema in Tilburg. Right. Then after the war, it went to the Coliseum in Rotterdam. 
Um, and then it was saved and put in a community centre in Rotterdam till that closed. And then the NOF got hold of it and they stored it since 2010. And they didn't find a home for it. So they've reused those four ranks in a bigger project. And the console was left yeah. surplus. So what better way? You brought it over yes. through customs yes. and all that. All yes, that there was some, a bit of suspicion as to what, what is this. <laughs> yeah. But we were all fine. So this is running now on a digital relay. Yes. Um, and as you said, there is a digital rank on it. Yeah. Um, again, I'm assuming that's to save a bit of space. And, you know, more money more for... Money. Yeah. I always, it all comes down to money. I coveted that brass saxophone sound. You know, there's nothing... To me, anyway, that, that's a very classic theatre organ sound, tibia and sax, and that's something I really wanted more than anything else. And I thought, well, I don't have sort of 20, well, I have sort of 12 grand around to buy a real world, it's a brass saxophone, so the digital will do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, of course, um, there's a link in the description as well to this uh, the organist encore, mm -hmm. your radio show. So, is the plan uh, to use this feature this more in the programmes, or what are, what are your long term plans for this? It's, uh, it's already been featured a couple of times, so Chris McPhee uh, from Australia came and recorded a couple of tracks on there um, for the programme, and as more and more people come through, I'm hoping that they'll record some stuff for me to use, um, and for my own listening, yeah. um, but the whole point of this is really to have it as a sort of studio yeah. instrument, really. Yeah. For your own enjoyment. Yes, and, yeah. and to use, so I'm hoping to have some gatherings here at yeah. home and some yeah. concerts in the Fantastic. new year. Well, as I say, it sounds fantastic. Thank I mean, you. I've, you know, I had a bit of practice this morning, <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, we'll have a listen to that uh, now. I'm not seeing a way in. I'm seeing, no, I'm seeing swans, you're seeing so shutters. Just... This was one of the biggest things we had to overcome. And I spoke to John Alton and said, wouldn't it be good if we had shutters and a door? So away he went and hey presto. Look at that. I'm going to squash you there that's if you're right. not careful. That's, that's right. so, so, that's so the it. shutters are mounted to the door. So I'll just let my camera jump in. Right. So, sorry, I'm just taking a minute to sort of get, get my head around this. So obviously, the, obviously it's all controlled by, yes. by that. Yeah. To, to build it into a door like that, that's quite, that's quite clever, actually. We got these shutters. The shutters came from the same organ that the console came from. Right. And when we got them back from Holland, I just propped them up on the door and thought, yeah. this was like, it was meant to fit yeah. in right. this doorway. So, yeah. well, well, I, well, I, was saying, I must say, one set like that actually gives you just enough volume as well. Yes, you know, yes. Because obviously, because it would be very loud, wouldn't it? Uh, but, and especially you know. having the door there as well yeah. to yeah. just bring it back a bit. Yeah. And this is where it all Yes. Happens. Well, I must say, it's all very impressive. Though. Will you talk, talk me through some of this? How did you, you know, it's all very crammed in. It, it, it's sort of like the garage was made for it, in a way. Yeah. Um, but uh, all, all uh, eight ranks fit in here very snugly. So on the far left, we've got the uh, standard tuba from the Commodore Hammersmith. Standard tibia from Folkestone. The Barbieri trumpet from Leamington Spa. And then we've got uh, the World It's a String from West End Birmingham. Standard Diapason, uh, Christy Hole Flute from a church job, Celeste and Well It's a Vox right. with the traps and percussions up here. Yeah, it's all a very, all a very tidy job and this is your digital. Yes, um... so two, two, <laughs> two speakers there and one big subwoofer uh, out in the utility room. Yeah. So where's the, where's the blower? The upper side of that wall. Right, okay. So we're now outside the house. Uh, Literally outside, uh, the garage door's just been opened. Yes, I'm going to shield all this rubbish behind you. <laughs> so, so I'm assuming the blower's in here. Yes. And if I move this forward, you will be really particularly that's amazed. That what, that is what all you say? Is. 19 inches static. 19 inches static. It's the original Mindinger blower, but with a newer motor that was put in in about 1978. Ricky Hart removed that from the cinema on his own. He winched it down from the top of the cinema roof, loaded it into the back of his car, and got that new motor, new motor fitted. That is genuinely staggering, actually. I mean, I, I, again, if, you, if you're new to these kind of things, you'd see like Compton's Wurlitzers have got like big five, six stage blowers, you know, huge back, great big things, and then that, Doing to, that. to power all yes. that is fantastic, you know, so they're that standout, you know. Right, well, we've seen the pipework in the chamber and that dinky little blower that you know, manages to, you know, keep it all full of wind. Uh, would you demonstrate some of it, please? Yes, well, I'll start off with the quietest uh, stop, which is the flute. Very lovely, very typical sort of open flute sound. Then we've got two uh, string and celeste on the organ. They're both well, it's a violins. Like 
such. You have the Wurlitzer of Vox, which I'll put the trem on to save everybody's ears. <laughs> away quite nicely uh, and then we have the standard style Paisen which sounds a little bit like this Quite a nice style of place in that actually. Yeah. It's, it's, a round, it's a round sound, isn't it? It's quite, doing quite a lot. Though. You know, they were classical organ builders before yeah. they built cinema organs like Compton and Christie, so yeah. you can sort of tell that yeah, yeah. In, their, uh, in their build quality. And then we have the lovely tibia, which I particularly like. <laughs> Then we have the standard tuba, or Gottfried tuba actually, because they bought a lot of stuff in from America. And <laughs> sounds like that. And then we also have the Barbieri trumpet, which is quite fiery, and that sounds like this. <laughs> Post horn for the yes, Americans. Yes. Uh, and then the only digital rank is the saxophone. Now, on its own, you can sort of tell it's a bit digital, but. <laughs> but you put it on trem with the tibia and the vox, and it sort of comes to life. <laughs> Yes. And this has got some like, interesting special effects as well, hasn't it? You've got the pull-out drawer and all that kind of thing, haven't you? Yes, yeah, so there's, there's all sorts of stuff in the drawers for couplers and stuff. We've got some added effects, so choke cymbal, the old surf going, <coughs> even got the rain, just about. The then, yes. <laughs> and then we've got all the silent picture effects, so bird, fire bell. <laughs> Good old fashioned klaxon, train flute, siren and crash cymbal, and then the usual percussion, so some of which are electronic, some of which are not. So, you know, the vibraphone, for example, is electronic. Very lovely, and the Glock is real. Xylophone's real. The harp's electronic. And so is the piano. That's pretty much all yeah. there is. Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing of blend of old and new, isn't it? Yes. I say the, the, with maybe the electronic ranks on their own, you can sort of tell, but when it's all mixed together, it, it adds to it, doesn't it? Well, Ricky Hart experimented a lot. I mean, the original organ at Folkestone had a whole electronic section which he built in the 50s yeah. <coughs> with valve oscillators and all sorts. And he was continually experimenting with adding keyboards and all sorts of stuff to the organ, as well as having that bass department, yeah. which was all electronic. Yeah. So all I've done is sort of, well, if he was around today, he probably would have used Hauptwerk for all yeah. of that stuff, yeah. which is what I've done here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I have a go? Of course you can. <laughs>
folks, hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, well, see you next time. Bye-bye for now.